Come on, really? I pay for the ultra package. Ugh, this stinks. If that scene looked all too familiar, you're not alone. Here are some simple ways to get the most speed possible from your home internet. This is DIY in 5. Hey everyone, Trisha Hirschberger here. Many of us are relying on our home internet more than ever for work, leisure, social interaction, and more. With so many important aspects of life reliant on this interconnectivity, it's incredibly frustrating when you get stuck in the loading zone. Today, we are going to walk through some steps to make sure your home internet is as optimized as possible. Let's do this. The first thing you'll want to do is check your internet plan to see if the speed of service you've purchased will meet your current demand. Since stay-at-home recommendations have taken effect across the world, you may have increased your usage from when you initially signed up for service. Check out the Broadband Speed Guide on FCC.gov to estimate what type of plan you might need. Next, check to see if your router supports the speed that you're paying for. It may be time for an upgrade. Even though this might seem like a higher cost investment at first, many internet service providers will loan you a modem router with your service plan for a monthly fee that adds up over time. After that, it's time to test your speed. I do this before every conference call or live stream to make sure my internet can handle it. Speedtest.net is a popular online free resource that will tell you your ping, download, and upload speeds at any given time. There are also broadband speed test apps if you want an alternative. Unfortunately, fluctuating internet speeds are a reality that most of us have gotten used to. But if you see your internet regularly below what your ISP is charging you for, you should contact them to see what the issue is. Sometimes a quick router reset will do the trick, but other times it could be more complicated than that. Speaking of your router, modern wireless routers usually have two signals, a 2.4 gigahertz band and a 5 gigahertz band. Note a 5 gigahertz band is different than 5G. Some service providers have stopped giving dual band routers because too many people complained about not wanting 5G in their houses. That's a whole separate video for another day. Anyway, the reason having a dual band router is a good thing is 2.4 gigahertz connections offer broader coverage and process data slower than five gigahertz connections. They can also be impacted by neighboring networks, so you might wanna try and change the channel in your router settings to one that's not as popular. On the other hand, five gigahertz connections process data faster and offer more stable connections, but the signal coverage is shorter than 2.4 gigahertz and many smart home devices aren't five gigahertz compatible. If you do have a 5 GHz network available, it's smart to dedicate it to your most important uses, such as work or online courses or competitive gaming. Where you put your router is also important. Try to place it in a central location up off the floor uninhibited by other devices so that it can give you as much coverage as possible. Your router may have a limited range or have trouble giving signal through floors and walls, and try to avoid placing it near big sheets of metal as well. If you're still having issues, you can try a different router, some work better for certain home setups than others, or get a Wi-Fi range extender or mesh network router to improve the Wi-Fi signal strength. If possible, a direct ethernet cable connection between the router and your device will provide the highest speeds and alleviate Wi-Fi congestion issues, but that's not always attainable depending on your setup. Do you have any tips that we didn't cover in this video? Please go ahead and share them because your solution might be exactly what someone else needs to avoid the spinning wheel of doom. And finally watch that Ghostbusters Reunited Apart episode. That was so good, am I right? Anyway, thank you so much for watching this episode of DIY in 5. Please like this video, subscribe to this channel, and tap that bell so that you don't miss out on any future tech tips. Take care and stay safe, everyone. Bye.